Good afternoon and welcome to the eye in the sky on a glorious sunny afternoon on Juma Game Reserve. You can see that Fergus and myself are getting going in Jigger and we are driving down Philemon's Dip currently and we are busy going to go and explore the beautiful vast wilderness that is Juma Game Reserve. Doesn't it look beautiful at the moment with the nice green emerald colors that we're seeing? Now, I almost forgot that I need to actually introduce myself and tell you who you're actually seeing at the moment. So, my name is Tristan, and on camera today I've got Fergus, who is our drone pilot. There's Fergus's thumb. Look at the man go. He's operating a camera, a drone, and giving us a thumbs up all at once. What a special human he is. Now, it is a live interactive safari, so it would be really, really nice if you would all talk to us and tell us what you want to tell us, what you want to hear, what you want to see, and, well, if you have any questions about the African wilderness. And you can do all of that on hashtag Safari Live or on, well, well hashtag Safari Live on Twitter or on the YouTube chat, should you want to. Now, the plan for this afternoon is it's time to exact some revenge on the spotted cats that have been, well, not very cooperative in the last few days. So Byron, myself and Ali are going to launch a three-pronged attack where we are going to try and find them using all means necessary. We've got our expert tracker in the form of Herbie with Ali on foot. We have Tony the Droney up in the sky with Fergus operating and myself on Jigger. And we're going to have Byron and Viam on Rusty. And hopefully between all of this, we're going to find some sign of a spotted cat somewhere in this area. And that's kind of going to be the, my plan, at least. I don't know about the other two. I'm speaking for them as though they're all going to be doing the same thing. But I think so, given that we were discussing it before we left, that one of us would like to find a spotted cat somewhere. Good. At least the sun is shining and everything is good. And we are going to have some beautiful weather this afternoon, which should mean good game viewing. And so I'm going to send you across to Byron, who is also out and about and is rearing to go and wants to say good afternoon. I am indeed, and we've got a wonderful start so far. Look at all these animals enjoying the clearing. Um, there's a lot of good vegetation. They probably drank down at the dam, um, we just above uh, Voyatella Dam. And there's Warthog, there's Impala, there's Inyala to the back. This area is, is teeming with animals at the moment, which is really, really beautiful. And my name is Byron, and on camera with me this afternoon is Viam. So it's uh, great to have you all with us again. Um, so, yeah, as Tristan says, um, we've got such a beautiful day. Compared to the last two days, I suppose, with that overcast weather, the sun is out. It's not, it's not unbearably hot. It's actually very pleasant right now. And, um, and a lot of wildlife to start with, which is great. It was a bit quiet this morning. I'm hoping we have some luck this afternoon, and yeah, I think with it being such a lovely day, the chances are the animals are going to move around a lot more, come out into the open and not hide in the thickets. So let's see what we can find this afternoon. Uh, now, Tristan and I aren't the only ones out. I'm sure Tristan already told you that Ali's going to be doing bushwalk, but she would like to say good afternoon. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to the walking part of today's safari. We are busy looking at what appears to be a chick of a gymnogene all the way up there on that Ludwood tree. Now, it's a little bit far away from us, but every now and again you can hear the whistling sounds. So, ooh, almost. There we go. I don't know if you can hear, but it just made the call again. Yeah, it's very faint in the distance, and the only way <laughs> that we actually managed to spot that particular one is because we saw one of the parents flying around just around the tree. My name is Ali, and on camera with me today is Senzo. And then, of course, lovely Herbie is joining us as our lead trails guide looking after our safety. Now, remember, if you've got any questions or any comments, please feel free to send them through using the hashtag Safari Live or the YouTube chat. Now, our plan for this afternoon, 
I think I would like to focus on a lot of plants and different things, but I'm also on the Let's Take Revenge of the Spotted Cats team. So we actually heard guinea fowl alarming not too far from the lodge, so we're going to go investigate, see if perhaps we can pick up any tracks for any leopards or perhaps any other cats or who knows. I know there's a big snake that lives around there, so I wouldn't want to miss on that either. That would be quite wonderful to see. So I think that's going to be ill. Mrs. Bear, Mrs. Zero, you say you would like to see a water buck or a snake. Um, okay, we'll definitely keep them in mind. Water monitor, sorry. I can't hear all that properly. I'm going to have to work on that. But yes, that would be wonderful. Well, we are actually headed towards one of the pans, so I think we might have a good chance of finding one of the monitors there. And we're headed onto the direction where Tristan had that truck for that big big fat snake a few days ago so I'm hoping maybe we'll be able to bump into a python over there that would be wonderful because it would be my first python in Juma now while we walk that way let's head over to Byron who's enjoying his drive I am indeed um, but and now I've heard that uh, we've got a few requests and the requests are mainly for snakes and monitor lizards it's interesting it's uh, an unusual request, but I like it. I like it a lot. I'll definitely try. F oh my word! I think uh, it was a malachite kingfisher. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Um, let me see if I can find. There was not a kingfisher we see regularly here. I just caught a glimpse of it. Uh, sure, Vim. Hold on. Let me just scan there. That's definitely not a. Kingfisher we see regularly around here. Um, the colours were completely different. No, we have to try find this. Stay with us. Let me see. I don't think it flew very far. Okay, let's see. Uh, I just caught a glimpse of the the colour, and it it was different. It wasn't a woodland or a brown hooded. I think this was possibly. A little malachite kingfisher. Oh no, it's so thick here at the moment. Sure, I've never seen that kingfisher around here. Now, I don't normally do this for a bird. But I'm just going to stick our nose into the bush here a little bit. Just to have a look because... I'm not sure if many of our viewers have seen this bird on camera. Let's just scan here for a second. Hold on. Um, I just want to double check. I'd like to show you what I thought I saw. Uh, and it was a brief, uh, brief view. It, uh, literally, just a glimpse of it fly through here into this thick area. I'm sure it's sitting around here somewhere. I might even walk in there just now to go and have a look and see if we can find it for you. Um, there we go, kingfisher, and I'm almost certain it was a malachite. Now I'll, I'll tell you why. Because look at the. The, the coloration of the malachite um, there and there it's got a lot of brown on the front and that blue on the back it's a smaller kingfisher it's not as big as the others it's only about 14 centimeters but I'm almost certain that was the color I saw mm. sneaky little bird very sneaky. But we'll have a look around. Maybe maybe we still see it. That would be a great start to this afternoon's drive. But it is very thick over there. So I'm not sure if we'll have a good view. Let me just go around here. And stick our nose in here. See, it flew off. It looked like it almost landed again, but I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe one of those trees at the back there. And there's a squirrel alarm calling at the moment. 
Is there a Warburg's Eagle? Uh, right, uh, there was a Warburg's Eagle here. Maybe that's what it's alarm calling at. Or it could also be alarm calling at the drone. Let's go to Tristan and find out what he's viewing from up there. Well, I wonder, Byron, I wonder if it is, if they do affect, well, the drone affects squirrels in that way. I don't think so, because squirrels, well, maybe actually, because squirrels do alarm call at absolutely everything. Now, you might be seeing us and thinking, well, we're in the exact same place and that we haven't moved. Well, we have moved. We just had to quickly go back to camp and grab something extra for our afternoon's adventures. And so that's why we're pretty much in the same area that we were a little bit earlier. But we're going to try and check absolutely everywhere high and low and see if we can find anything and with the help of the drone hopefully we should be able to actually pick up something but you can see now we're on what's known as Ingwe Alley so it gives you a little bit of a different view of what it looks like it's got this big curve in it and then it starts to go to a series of mud wallows and these mud wallows are often a really productive place to start, particularly on a warm, sunny afternoon. It's a good place for elephant and buffalo. And, well, we know a number of our spotted friends use this road as a kind of path to move along on. So we know Tundi uses it, Hosana uses it, Tamba, and even Hukamuri has been seen moving around this road, which is very good. Love my Charlie? No, no sand cats here, unfortunately. We're in an area where we are basically um, too watery and too th thick with vegetation. So we're in a situation where we've got only a few of the sort of more wetter species cats in the area. We don't have any of the sand cats because it's not the right habitat for sand cats. Sand cats need a nice sort of desert environment where they're able to then sit and enjoy you know the openness and the dryness and they are adapted for that they're not adapted for an environment like this this area here is far too like i say wet and thick for them to be able to use this now you might hear a little beeping sound the drone is just coming into land because it's almost time for its little battery change and so before we get to the f first couple of water holes we thought we'd just put him down and have a little look and see what's going on but it seems like it's going to be a really good afternoon from a lot of points of view because we're going to have a situation where hopefully like i said the sun is going to draw things out good now while we carry on and try and get the batteries on the drone sorted out let's send you back across to ali who is on foot and i'm sure he's going to love looking for all kinds of little plants Well, we are looking at all kinds of little plants, but I want to show you one that's actually very common. Unfortunately, this one is not flowering just yet, but I'm sure it will later on. Now, this particular one, it also grows in smaller versions of it, very beautiful yellow trees, and we are looking at what's called a flannel weed. Now, very, very common all around this area. I think maybe perhaps this is more realistic as to the way that we see it often, this little bush, it's never all that tall. And funny enough, we see it all the time and it's easily confused with another one that uh, I cannot see around here that's actually called a butylon. And funny enough, the butylon doesn't really have a common name, which is quite hilarious. So if we do see the abutilon, we will let you know. But this particular plant that we're looking at is actually comes in very handy, the leaves, when we are walking out in the bush or when we are being terrified by all sorts of mosquitoes and plants and even the ticks that Tristan hates. Now, in some cultures, what they do is they grab the leaves and then they grind them all together and they mix them with oil. And then all that mixture that you get for the leaves and the oil, and you apply them on your skin and it's perfect insect repellent. So maybe we should actually take a few of this ones with us just in case. Oh, look, there's a feather here as well. Hmm, somebody's lost something. Looks like perhaps a starling, just judging by the colors and that typical iridescence that we see. That's very, very pretty. Stephen, um, there are actually quite a few poisonous plants, and if we do see anyone on the road or as we're walking today, then I will certainly point them out. Now, normally the more terrible plants are the ones that either have very, very bright coloration so the aposematic coloration that you've got to be careful of but there's also some that they have the normal plain greenish colors of that the rest of the plants do but they have a milky latex and that milky latex is actually the trouble because it can do anything from if it goes into your eyes making you blind make, giving you an upset stomach if you eat it or you know it can even eventually if you ingest too much of it cause death 
So there are quite a few. I can't really see anyone's around us because it seems like we're in Terminalia country, which are all the trees around us. These are old Terminalias. What's the common name again? Ooh, I can't remember. <laughs> so we'll carry on going and then we'll see if we can find another poisonous plant. And if we do, then I'll certainly point that out. Now, while I look for the plants, let's head back to Byron, who's still driving around. I wonder why Ellie wants to look for all those poisonous plants. Did uh, Tristan do something wrong, perhaps? <laughs> now, we, um, we're driving down um, the roads to go and basically check some of the water holes. It has been a lovely warm day, and I think there might be a chance of seeing some activity near the water. So I'm hoping so, I'm hoping. Apparently, we just got an update that um, uh, Tumba, that young male leopard Tumba, was found um, sometime this morning, but on Torchwood. I wonder if it's not the tracks that we had going into Torchwood from uh, 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 from Cheetah uh, Cutline. I, I'm, I showed a lot of you the, the tracks that we had this morning, and I think it's possibly where he um, where he crossed into Torchwood. So unfortunately, we cannot get there. But it was nice to hear that he is around. I mean, it would be better if he was on our side, but it's the way it goes sometimes. Oh, I'm so curious about that little kingfisher that we saw. Well, I caught a glimpse of it. I'm, I'm almost certain it was a Malachite fin uh, kingfisher. Debbie in Vancouver, you say the Malachite fin uh, kingfishers. I can't say that word today. The Malachite kingfishers are the most beautiful. I think so too. They really are beautiful in terms of, I think, with uh, within the kingfisher family, that's for sure. Oh, there's a lot of water around here. Are we going to see something? No, not yet, not yet. Well, it, it is still quite warm. Maybe a lot of the animals will wait till it gets a little bit cooler and then possibly start moving around. You never know. You never know. Ah, oh, Care Bear, you say today is International um, Polar Bear Day. Well, that's wonderful. Um, we're definitely not going to find one of those here but um, but you know I spoke about this uh, this morning a little bit ah my favorite elephant I spoke about this this morning and um, just general awareness of animals and that's why it's so wonderful for our viewers to let us know about something like International Polar Bear Day so we can always create awareness for the world that you know it's always need to protect all wildlife and what a nice surprise. A herd of elephant. See, and I was saying possibly find some animals coming down to drink. And there are a few of them um, that are heading in the direction of a little water hole. So maybe we get a nice view of them drinking. I'm going to go reposition. There you can see a few of them drinking there. Let's go move a bit closer. Maybe we get some splashing and throwing water over themselves and mud. Maybe see some youngsters come and be a bit playful around the water. Oh, sorry. Uh, this female is a little upset with us. I don't know why, maybe she's just moving off. I'm just going to keep quiet a little bit to see what she... Maybe she's just standing here to protect the youngster. It's moving off to the right. Possibly. And you can hear the elephant splashing, those youngsters busy splashing around. 
Keeping a little quiet so the female doesn't feel threatened. And I think she's starting to relax now again. She's smelling us at the moment. Oh, look at this. This is wonderful. Yeah, she's calmed down nicely. But again, always respectful of these animals. Completely relaxed, not interested in us at all. <laughs> That's funny. Watch how she reacts to the impala. Let's see what she. <laughs> the impala's not even sticking around. <laughs> him and quickly make my way out of there. Oh, she. oh, she's coming back. Now, the trouble is, because of the way she's moved, um, oh, listen to her communicating. Did you hear that? Sit, sit a little still. Um, so I'll tell you what's happened is um, she moved off, but then she actually put, put us in between her and the youngster, which is not a situation you really want to be in. But I've sat very quietly, keep, kept my voice very low. There we go, now the youngster is suckling, so they seem to have calmed down nicely. And you see, the, again, the whole thing is just sitting quietly, but keep an eye out for any signs of them being a bit aggressive or upset. Uh, I'm just watching this female. Oh, no, no, okay, okay, hold on. No, 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 Don't be ugly. I'll move out the way. Wait, hey. Just moving back slowly. I want to give them a reason to get upset. Slowly moving back. There we go. They just want a bit of space. As I move back, I will switch off again. So there's not a lot of noise. All right. There we go. See, I think in a situation like that, wouldn't be ideal to make a lot of noise, rev the engine, um, and speed off. That could give them that could uh, give them a bit of a fright. But did you hear the, those sounds? A little bit of trumpeting, the um, vocalizations, those grumbles, the vocalizations. But they've calmed down now. Okay. Uh, this um, female in front of us was quite close to us. Listen to that sound, amazing. I'm just looking behind me, making sure there aren't any others coming around. And oh, it's fine. They, they've settled down nicely. Um, uh, sorry, was it Eve um, asking if any elephant have never seen a car before? Um, and Eve, yes, I'm sure in certain areas there would be elephant that haven't seen cars before. Um, most certainly, I think, however, in this area, all these elephants have encountered a car at some point already. Ah, oh, look, they're spraying the water there. This is wonderful. <laughs> but um, that can get your adrenaline going a little bit. They didn't seem overly upset but that one female was really close to us if she wanted to she could have 
she could have really caused a bit of damage to us. But again, that like I, you know, said, keep an eye on them. They, I think, because that youngster was close by. Maybe that other female was. Maybe they're just a little, little excited. I don't know. And um, and cautious with the whole herd going to drink. You notice how these females are facing outwards now. So maybe they just wanted us to back off a little bit. Um, but they, they didn't show signs of real aggression. But, I, you know, I think if I reacted differently, maybe it could have led to that. If I started the engine, made a terrible noise, revved the engine. Try to drive away quickly. They could possibly have... I like situations like that because I think it's important for people to see. Um, you know, it's not always going to be um, a wonderful, easygoing sighting at times. And that's what I always say. You have to be respectful of the animals and you have to be careful all the time. Anyway, I'm going to sit and watch them a little bit more. Let's go across to Ali who's looking for some tracks apparently. Well, we have found some tracks, but not quite for a leopard, but for one of the creatures we were mentioning earlier on. Now, if we look down here, it's for a very thick animal. And you can see it's been slithering all the way from there. It's been coming this way. And then again like this, again like this, then again, then again, and again. And it's carried on going that way. Now, there are a few things that might indicate to us, well, that it's going that way. And in case you haven't figured it out, well, we're looking at the tracks of a snake, a very big snake. Now, it also looks like a very well fed. I mean, if we look here at the width of this particular part, then we can tell that even if it's contorting as it's starting to move, then again, a little bit of a fatty snake. And I would love to be able to see it and find it. We've checked around here, but nothing really. Now, I imagine... Um, this was for some time during the day. It's been quite a hot day today, so it's perfect for snakes and other reptiles to start moving around because they rely on the environment to be able to regulate their body temperature. So as hot as it's been today, it's perfect for them to then start moving around. And I'm sure after the few cold days that we've had, they are absolutely loving um, the weather. Now, the only reason or, well, just looking at it quite clearly, and I'm going to have to show you this particular little stone, Senzo, for us to be able to know that it's gone this way it's because there's a very very faint trace there's a little rock here and you can see a very faint trace like this so we know that this rock actually started from here and as the snake was moving it got on it and then it dragged it as it carried on moving that way so it's always the tiny little things that give us some sort of indication as to what's going on and then also all well, the curvature here and then here Right, we are going to carry on. We're not too far from where we think perhaps we might have heard something. So hopefully we'll see something. Telepanda, we do get mambas there, although a mamba will not leave a track that big. I reckon that is either for a python or African rock python or perhaps for a puff adder, a very big fatty puff adder. Mambas would be a lot, uh, a lot thinner. They are much, much thinner than those ones, but they can get very, very long as well. So, not too sure, maybe we'll see a mamba on one of the trees, that's the areas where I've seen them far more. But while we do that, let's go to Byron, who's got something with very, very long and green that it's using. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what Ellie's talking about, but have a look at this, this little baby, and maybe that is why this herd is so cautious. This little one has just come out, out the bush behind us. And it is tiny, absolutely tiny. I have not seen a little elephant like this for ages. Wow, that is special. Now, This little one, Eve, getting back to your question, maybe this little one hasn't seen a car before. I don't know. It looks so young. It looks still fluffy. See that the hairs on it? Um, Tula Ann. Good afternoon, Tula Ann. Um, Tula Ann's one of our youngest viewers. 
of five years old and Tula and it it can be a little scary when the elephant um, uh, shout and scream or trumpet like that rather when they make a noise it can be a little bit scary and that's why we just need to be stay calm and move out of their way slowly and then they and then they usually settle down again but I think it must be because of this tiny baby that they they a little bit more cautious than usual I'm hoping that little one comes out see how it's staying close to its mother yeah this is so beautiful and so special this has definitely made my day look at that That's really, really sweet. Wow. Lisa, I'm sure the elephants have got nose hairs in their trunks to help with a little bit of the dust and that, that they're constantly picking up and, and when they're um, brushing through the, the vegetation. So I, I do think they have got um, some nose hairs. But um, I've never been close enough to inspect the inside of a trunk. Look at that. Now, that's not necessarily mating behavior. That's just dominance behavior. Young elephant playing and trying to dominate each other. It's almost like just teenagers playing and being a bit boisterous. Oh, wow, this little one is... I can't believe how small it is. <laughs> very, very special. Now, I don't know, but that elephant looks like it's within a week old, um, maybe two weeks old or so, so maybe so, somewhere around there. I just, uh, it's so small. I'm going to try to get a closer view, although that mother probably isn't going to bring it out into the open. Or maybe, you know what, we'll be patient, we'll wait around here. And the rest of the herd are moving, maybe she decides to bring that little one out for us to have a closer look at but you, I mean it's it's like a little fur ball and for an elephant that's amazing <laughs> uh, Ravi now I think uh, when an elephant is born it can weigh up to a hundred kilograms a young elephant calf um, let me double check Ravi pull out all the all the mammal books quickly but but yeah it's about a about hundred kilograms or so um, let's see if I can just find out exactly what they say here with uh, with an elephant calf but I'm almost certain it's around there Just moving through there. Very, very cautious with the youngster like that. They're very careful. They don't just want to expose it too much. Um, because they are obviously quite vulnerable at that young age. Even though those mothers, uh, well, yeah, and I say mothers because all these elephants would be very, very protective. So the, uh, the uh, let's see if they say anything about the African elephant and the young. Um, yeah, between 75 and 120 kilograms when they're born, which is yeah, so exactly about 100 kilograms. Um, and I'm sure, Ravi, you know, 
it's it's about a 22 month gestation period a very long time for an animal to be pregnant isn't that amazing i'm still i'm gonna come out for us let's go across to tristan and see how his afternoon is going so far well our afternoon has improved drastically in that we have found steaming fresh leopard tracks so the leopard male has walked here at some point it seems as though it's on top of all the franklin tracks that i can find and even on top of some of the ant trails that are on the road itself so they look really really good there's a little mud wallow behind me but he's not at this mud wallow so i think he's continued maybe on towards chelapan side so i want to go and just double check around there there were lots of signs of ellies in that area so maybe the ellies have just pushed him somewhere into a thicket so i want to just turn around and have a look there's my shoe print if you wanted to get an idea of how big a size footprint he has so really good news because it means that there is a leopard on this property somewhere it's now just a matter of getting onto these tracks and trying to find it the problem is is that the area that we're in is very dense and very thick and so it's going to be a tough little task to be able to find him here but we'll try herbie's going to come and get on foot on this area and, and in this area should i say and he's going to try and give us a hand so we're going to try one vehicle and herbie will be on foot but i think he must have drank here and then maybe like i say gone towards the mulawati but these tracks like i say are really good they're the best tracks that i've seen in over a week of looking for leopards on Juma, which is amazing news. So hopefully we're going to be able to try and find this individual. I was kind of secretly hoping when I spotted those tracks at first that I just missed him lying here at the waterhole, but he's not here. I had a little walk around and I can't find his tracks actually coming to drink. So I think he just meandered on and carried on going forward and that he must be somewhere near Chelapan. So I'm going to go and have a little look around there. While I do that, let's send you back across to Byron with his elephants and see whether or not that little baby is still providing a lot of cuteness. Well, now we've got an elephant reaching up and I don't know why that is. It just it almost looks like it's being a bit playful. I hope it doesn't push over this leadwood. I don't think it will. Another elephant approaching from our left. Now, I haven't seen that youngster again. The mother's taken it further into the bush. I'm kind of hiding it a little bit. But they're hanging around, so... Mason, age nine, afternoon, Mason. Nice to have you on Safari Live with us. Um, and you asking, why do the elephants always flap their ears? Well, Mason, the main reason is, so it's, it's very, very hot at the moment. Hold on, I just want to see what these females do. They seem to be a little, little grumpy this afternoon. Now, perhaps this is a young male. That, I don't know if it belongs to this herd or not. And this female has come to inspect and she might decide to chase him off. Let's see what happens for a second, Mason, and then I'll answer your question. Um, okay, don't chase us off. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Now, I'm just going to reverse a little bit more. And I'll tell you why. is because when they do that... Um, they sometimes just want a little bit more space. She was happy with us, but she's not happy with that young male. Did you notice how she chased him? So I'm just, I'm just being um, uh, cautious because that other youngster ran, uh, uh, ran quite quickly towards her too. So just want to give them even more space, let them relax. But interesting, and as I said, you could see that male didn't look like he was part of the herd. And this female, which might be the matriarch, I'm not sure, came right in and chased him off, or came right up to him and chased him off. <laughs> it was funny. Uh, you see, now, if that big, or it's not that big, but if that young male. <laughs> yeah, Francis from Israel, you say she was crafty. That was, uh, that was really interesting to see. Amazing how... Oh, she chased him off. 
man. <laughs> so, um, Mason, sorry, getting back to your question, why the elephants, why the elephants um, um, flap their ears like that? They, um, I think, generally, uh, the main reason, Mason, is because when it is very hot, they flap their ears to help cool themselves down. So they've got a lot of little veins running through their running through their uh, ears. And what happens, and if you look there, Mason, you see how she's flapping her ears? As she's doing that, she's getting cool air to flow over those ears. And that helps cool the blood in the ear down a little bit. Not by much, but it does cool it down a bit. So it doesn't actually fan the body. It's cooling the blood in the ear. That blood then starts to circulate through the body, move through the body. And because it's been cooled down slightly, it helps cool them down a little bit. But like I say, not by much. So that's the main reason, Mason, they always flap their ears. They also do it if they feel aggressive, but then they'll open their ears or flap very quickly. This is just cooling, um, cooling themselves down. All right. Let's go across to Ali, find out her, how her walk is going. Well, walk is going wonderful, but we have found someone who's not having such a wonderful day. Now, it seems like, and I could be mistaken, but it seems like all of these polyrhachis ants have got a tiny little grub or larva of some sort, and they're busy taking it around. So you see they're all pretty much attacking it, and what it's doing, it's just like it's folding onto itself, almost like a circle, um, like a circle to try and prevent them from actually getting to it. Now, I think they're probably going to take it to the to their nest wherever it might be I can't see anywhere from here but definitely somewhere around this area because they haven't stopped carrying it around but what a terrible day to be you oh that is super interesting well we found the kill for the afternoon and definitely not one that we expected to see now I have no idea what this was going to become or will potentially become if it manages to escape the forces of all of the ants that are after it. Now they're being very vicious and they're all moving at the same time and they're all holding it together and pulling and tossing and so on and you see they've actually walked at a very, very, very fast speed. So I wonder if they're not actually going to come onto this way. Hmm. Now I can't see anything from here but this is so interesting and I have no idea what this could be. Uh, could be so many different species. Uh, no idea, but very, very interesting. And it's, I don't know if you guys are able to see, but all of their little pincers are all holding on tight. And what is hilarious is that they're actually very coordinated. They're all pushing in the same direction and they almost go turning around rather than pulling and tossing and all trying to go into a different direction. That is incredible. And look at them. Look how they're getting across all those obstacles, all the grass, everything that's in their way. And I wonder where you guys are going to head off to. Now, I did see a tick somewhere around here on the ground, and I would prefer not to take it with me. Tristan, yes, indeed. What teamwork this is. They're probably taking it back, and I'm sure there's a whole colony that's waiting for dinner, and they would love to show it to them. Now, they're heading into what seems to be a bit of a thicket, and I don't know if perhaps that's where the colony is. And I don't really want to disturb the grass all that much, just in case they have, they have chosen that spot because they want to have it well protected. So if I start moving things around, I might just expose them for something bigger to come and steal. Obviously, what's their very hard-earned meal. Guys, it is incredible. That is such a good little thing to find. Francis, I do think it's still alive because every now and again it opens up a little bit and tries to close back down again. So I do think it's still alive. Um, perhaps not not wanting to be alive or that aware of what's going on, but it's doing the only thing that it can to, to prevent actually getting killed by the ants or being dragged into an, any area, and it's just rolling and curling into a ball. Now the hard or the exoskeleton or the, I don't even know if it's an exoskeleton in a, in a larva of sorts, but the outside part seems to be a little bit harder. So I'm sure there's a protective layer that will prevent the ants from actually hurting it too much. Now I think they're going to stay in here somewhere. I haven't seen it come out again, so we're not going to disturb them any longer and we're going to send you by across to Byron who is with the biggest ones of them all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're still sitting here. Hold on, there is the mother with her youngster. 
with that baby. Look at that. Isn't that the cutest thing you've seen in a long time? Staying very close. I'm hoping, I hope she keeps him out there for a little while. Look here from this angle. Look at that. Yeah, Dale, yeah, all the baby elephants are born with a lot of hair that is very visible. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> so cute. I'm actually going to see if I can get another view from the other side there. Just watch out for that grumpy female. Um, oh, I don't think she's grumpy. I think she's just careful. No, she's not grumpy. Um, so, Dale, yeah, surprisingly, they, all elephants when all elephants uh, when they um, when they are born, they um, uh, they've got quite a lot of hair on them, and even ele adult elephants have got hair on them, but it's not as uh, not as prominent, obviously, as when, uh, when they're so young. Uh, now let's see. Oh dear. I think I'm going to have to go past this one. Um, uh, will she mind? Let's see. I'm going to move slowly again. Oh no, she minds. <laughs> okay, I won't go that way. See, it's amazing to see the behavior, how protective she is. Very, very cautious of allowing anything close to that youngster. But my curiosity is getting the better of me, and I want to see that little one. I want to show you how small that little one is. But at the same time, I don't want to disturb the elephant and cause him to to get upset. Maybe we're lucky and they come out this side. Actually, let's have a look here. I'm sorry. Let me see. Um, I just don't know if she's still on the edge over there or if she's moved further in. Let's go and have a look around here. Also, Tristan said he had some fresh tracks of a leopard around here. So, we're going to be giving him a hand. And we'll keep an eye out. And we'll also listen for any alarm calls while we're sitting here. Because we'll be fairly quiet. So, if there are any alarm calls, we'll be able to hear them. little one is I think through there somewhere let's see if we can get a view of it there we go there we go oh, June what animal makes the best parents I, I don't know June that's a good question but yeah, I'd have to say elephant in terms of being so protective and careful and caring for the young. See how even even the, the younger elephant in the herd are very protective over that youngster. I think we're gonna get a nice view of it. Watch it's gonna walk through there following the mother. There we go. <laughs> That is wonderful. Oh dear. Yeah. <laughs> VM said Grumpy's coming. <laughs> okay. Let's just watch what she does. Hopefully she just decides to move off where the rest of the elephant are. Go that way, please. Mm. Have I upset you that much today? Again, I'm going to sit quietly. 
See, but also, what I've also done is, is I've positioned the vehicle in a way that if I need to get out of here very quickly, I can. Um, I can literally turn onto the road and drive away um, very quickly. So, but, no, she's fine. Keeping a close eye on us. <laughs> nice cool breeze at the moment too, which is lovely. It, it really is a fantastic afternoon for a safari. It's not too hot, there's a bit of a cool breeze, it's very peaceful blue skies. It doesn't get much better than this. Okay, there's the odd cloud around, but have a look, it's bright blue. Now I think um, I think what I'm going to do is actually leave these elephants now. We've had such a wonderful sighting with them, but also I don't want to stress them out. They're comfortable, they're happy. We've had a wonderful sighting, we're going to leave them. I'm going to go and have a look around and see if I can give Tristan a hand with these leopard tracks that he's had. Speaking of which, let's go across to him now and find out how it's going. Well, Byron, it's not really progressed very far from where we last were and the reason why is I can't find a single other track there's just elephants absolutely everywhere that have just squashed everything and walked all over the roads and so it's made it really tough to be able to actually see where this leopard has walked so I'm thinking what might have happened is that this leopard may have walked here and bumped into these elephants and then veered off and gone and lay in a thicket somewhere and it's just waiting for all the ellies to pass before it starts to move again. So that's why I'm just trying to do a loop. I went through the Mulawati, checked the Mulawati side, can't come up with anything there and so I want to just head back towards sort of Pangolin Track, maybe do Pangolin Track a little bit and then go down Weavers and head I suppose maybe more towards twin dams I, I don't know maybe that leopard went there I, I know Byron's ahead of me so maybe he's gonna check twin dams which is fine I'll check around here a little bit more carefully once again now those are hyena tracks that's not all we're looking for we want leopard tracks I don't think it can gonna have gone far the tracks are very fresh they very similar to what the elephant track looks like the same kind of crispness of those Ellie tracks and we know the Ellie's were right around the corner so I have a funny feeling that this leopard bumped into these alleys at some point and it's just trying to kind of find its way through all of this now which leopard it is anyone's guess at this stage could be Hukamuri I, I hazard a guess that it is him given that he was seen apparently crossing to our side yesterday sometime I think yesterday evening I'm not sure so I would hazard a guess that maybe it's him now we know with him he can be a tough character to find at the best of times because of his zigzagging movements that he has and so I'm just trying to really go quite slowly in this section and double check but with all the Ellie's about I think his direction might have changed a little bit maybe I missed him on the other side on Ingwe Alley when I was on that side I didn't really look very hard at sort of in the drainage side I just looked at the wallows and there was nothing really lying there there's nothing crossing this section either but I can see just a lot more elephant tracks that are visible all over the place so I don't know um, I'm just trying to think where else I can check the only other thing I think I can do is maybe just go off-road a little bit and just see in the area where I last had the tracks maybe I see something or find something in that section I can see Byron here in front of me so he's got Chela Pan covered if this male came this direction I'm checking here now while I just double check and have a little chat to Byron quickly and see how we're gonna do this let's send you back across to Ali who's still busy walking about and I think she's on her way to come and give us a hand as well 
Well, we certainly will try to give them a hand, but we are on our way. It takes a little bit longer to get from one point to the next when you are walking. Now, I want to show you this particular plant over here that is perhaps one of my favorite ones because it reminds me very much of summer, and I think its striking white coloration just stands out in the bush so beautifully. And it just looks like a mean little plant, but it's so pretty. Now, it's not fluffy. You can see it's quite hard. It's not like some of the acacia um, flowers that we get around here. But this particular plant, it's called the pink cushion seed. It's more grass than, than anything else. But it's got a very interesting use in certain areas. Now, because you find it in areas where there is a lot of water or close to the water sources like dams and rivers and so on, in some cultures, and I think this is more towards the, towards the northern side of South Africa, close to Botswana and those areas, it is believed that if somebody drowns, the way to go and recuperate their spirit, or perhaps even the body if they manage to find it, is to make a concoction out of the roots so that I think they'll boil them and then they'll eat them. And then that will prevent the evil spirit that comes in a form of a snake to actually cause them to drown while they look for the body because for some reason they believe that everyone that drowns it's because of this evil spirit that actually makes them drown and it's in the form of a snake so I think it would be a little bit scary perhaps this um, legend or this use uh, this spiritual belief came from the fact that sometimes crocodiles the way that they move in the water it's almost like a snake or sometimes very big pythons can be quite mean now there's another beautiful plant here which is a baboon stale but rather than this one I think I saw one that had the beautiful leaves or flowers but maybe I saw it a little bit earlier on but anyway we'll find another one we'll probably show it to you but this other plant here this one over here very very beautiful and Debbie this one is one of the plants that it's used for cooking now it's got a dual purpose you can cook the leaves and then just have them as a salad or almost uh, almost a spinach but it is also used as a torch now if you see and I think maybe this one here you can see it a little bit better all the different layers in the plant all of this ones when when you start burning them they burn very very slowly because it's so many layers all closely together that it doesn't go up in one single flame so it takes a while for it to start burning so a lot of the times people use it as a candle but the leaves you can eat them well you have got to cook them because otherwise they're going to taste a little bit dusty especially at this time of the year but this is one of the ones that you can eat and there are many plants that are used especially the flowers at this time of the year that you can cook the leaves and even throw in there the flowers because you can cook it all and I don't even know how to describe it. It all pretty much tastes like spinach. Just like every meat we eat pretty much tastes like chicken. <laughs> now, I want to have a look around because I did see one that had the flower. And it's a beautiful white colored flower. But now, where did we see it? Hmm. I think maybe I've lost it for now. So I'm going to have to look for another one because it's disappeared. So while we look for another one and potentially another plant that we can eat, let's head back to Byron. Yeah, well, I'm now driving around and Tristan and I are trying to work together um, to find a leopard in this area because he said he had tracks of a leopard that were on top of the elephant tracks. Now, I think uh, the, the elephant tracks is that are from that herd that we just saw. Um, yeah, here we go. There's that leopard track. It's a bit hard over here, so I don't know. Just having a good look. Did this leopard continue down the road or did it veer off somewhere? And it looks like it did. So, um, I mean, these elephants walked through here not too long ago. And these leopard tracks are on top of the elephant tracks. So, I'm sure this leopard is around here somewhere. But, as Tristan was saying, uh, maybe he saw the elephant and just decided to try and avoid them. And did a big loop around. Um... Yeah, I think uh, maybe let's go this way, Vim, and then we'll loop around in case he went through this block. I think that's maybe what he did. Let's see, let's see. So we'll try to work together. Tristan has headed down towards Twin Dams, so he's going to have a look there. Um, 
and you know what I like? I like this. I like um, driving and checking an area together because now we can both look very carefully for tracks and try and establish exactly where this leopard is and maybe have a better chance of finding it. Oh, but how amazing was that little, little elephant calf? It was an absolute amazing sighting and a, uh, really a highlight for me. See that little baby? So cute. <laughs> I'm very happy about that. Oh, there's a lovely drainage line here, so, you know, this leopard could potentially have moved down into there. Now it's just a case of scanning very, very carefully. Hmm. Where does this road go? There's a little two-track. It's just... Oh, is it a den site that was there? Okay. All right. Uh, no, let's carry on going around. Let's go across to Tristan and, and see if he's got any luck on his side. Well, we don't have any luck just yet. We've come all the way down to Twin Dams just to try and check if maybe, just maybe, this leopard got on to this side of the property, but it doesn't seem like it. I think it must have gone north away from those elephants and cut up towards Ingwe Alley. So maybe if Byron does that side, he might get lucky. What we do have at Twin Dams, though, is surprise, surprise, an elephant. So we have another Ellie around, which is not that I'm complaining, because I'm loving the fact that there's so many Ellies in this area, but it has been a real inundation of elephants. And I suppose with the sun that we've had today, it's the perfect weather for Ellies to come out and to be out and about and feeding. So this guy is just off the side of Twin Dams. But there is something very exciting, I believe, afoot on Chitwe. I believe there's a lot of commotion on that side. I can't hear what it is at that this stage. So I'm going to try and head a little closer towards Chitwe and see. I just got an update that there was lots of vehicles and all kinds of other things and so it can only be a good thing so i'm going to try and head a little closer towards chitwa try to get an update as to exactly what's going on there while we kind of just watch this ellie move around and think about well i've got the radio on so hopefully i'll pick up somebody shortly and i can actually find out exactly what they're talking about but i'm thinking maybe a leopard maybe there's a little tingana action happening at chitwa or maybe hosana it would be nice if it's hosana we haven't seen hosana in quite some time so i'd love to catch up with him but that seems to be a young bull that's all on his own. Very, very common to see a lot of the young bulls around on their own like this. Particularly when you've got a lot of females around in the area. It makes sense that you'll find a lot of bulls around. They're often kind of following in behind the females. In fact, this is a female by herself, now that I actually look at her properly. I'm so busy looking around that I actually didn't notice but it's a female by herself which is very strange generally you don't have females on there and maybe the rest of the herd is pushed off into the thickets and she's just kind of been left behind feeding off the fruits right now i'm going to try and head off towards chitla see what's happening that side while i do that let's send you back across to ali who's absolutely loving looking at all the flora this afternoon I am. It feels so good to be out and about so close to the plants and everything else. Now, this is a species of acacia over here. Now, easy way to identify, well, they're not called acacias anymore. They're probably called vacalias. Um, But it's just by looking at the leaves. So they've got this very set leaf structure. So you see they've got one on the one side and one on the other side. Now, this particular one, I'm going to go and call it a flaky bark thorn and I'm going to try to move the bark so you can get an idea as to why. Normally plant names tend to be quite descriptive so you see it's almost like a flaky th thorn or probably a little bit more obvious at the bottom all the way down there. Now you see it's starting to peel off over here. Now they don't really have all the too many medicinal uses or at least not this particular one but obviously because they've got all these very powerful and mean thorns a lot of the times they're used as just tooth Picks, natural toothpicks but what I liked about this one is you can tell where the new part of the plant is growing so if we see this bottom part here very dark very dark in coloration and it seems very set and the thorns very hard very hard thorns I can barely move them now if we go onto the newer part of the tree you see much bigger thorns so these are the new branches so you see the tree needs that extra protection for all the new things so I mean look at the size of this one it's probably bigger than my finger but it's, always, it's almost as a visual deterrent because if I touch it, I can actually bend it very easily. So this one, this one is a little bit harder 
this one is also soft so it's quite amazing just to see such big things but then once you actually come and touch them and see them up close they're not as scary as what they look like now on some species of acacia if you look very carefully but i don't think it's going to be the case with this one you can see that there are some species of ant that actually go and nest inside of the thorn so they make a tiny little hole and you can see a tiny little hole in there and then they go in there so the acacia will allow them to live within their thorns given that when an animal comes down maybe an elephant maybe another browser that the, all of the ants come out and all, they protect the tree because also they're protecting their own home so they tend, it's quite a widely studied phenomenon especially in East Africa not so much down here at least I haven't found that much information of that study being carried out here in South Africa but in East Africa and Kenya for sure and apparently Currently, um, the ants are really terrible when it comes to elephants. They tend to swarm the elephant's trunk and the elephants don't like it and they go away. Now, it's such a beautiful plant and I'm just so surprised. I mean, you've got to be very gentle and you see they bend. Very, very easy to bend for such a big, mean-looking thing. Oh, look. There's a tiny little one. Um, James, I'm not sure actually if there are any flowers in the area that are pollinated by plants. The vast majority of them, I would say, definitely pollinated by insects. I know for acacia flowers, there's been quite a debate if um, giraffe are actually pollinators of the predators of the plants, but it's the latest study that I read pointed that they're actually more predators than than pollinators. So in terms of ants, I'm actually not 100% sure if there are any species. That would actually be a good question. I would imagine they would play some sort of role, but I'm not too sure what's the extent of it. Now, I think we're approaching the area where those leopard tracks were, so we're going to carry on walking in this particular direction and see if perhaps we can find the leopard before we, bump into, <laughs> before we bump into Byron or the elephants. But while we do that, let's head over to Byron. Maybe we can spy him from the bushes. Oh, dear. There's Ellie close to us. I think we're all looking for leopard. The Oh, this is not close yet. Okay. Um, I'm scanning so carefully through this thick area at the moment. Just trying to have a, a good look and see if we can't find out where this leopard is. But uh, I wonder if it hasn't decided to go lie down somewhere in this thick block. Could very possibly have done that. It's so very difficult to see uh, tracks while we're driving. There have been a lot of vehicles up and down here. Look at the scrub here. Yeah. All spotted. Look at that. I just saw the ears of that little scrub here moving. Now you'd think, look, if we can spot that, surely we can spot a leopard. <laughs> but it's not that easy. Very, very cute. Well, that scrub here will hide there until until it gets dark and then probably move around and look for food. Now, it's not a bad idea to stop like this from time to time. Because maybe we hear some alarm calls. It could be, could be anything. It could be um, birds, it could be squirrels, monkeys, um, impala. So listening out for any alarm calls. I can hear a barred owlet calling behind me. Got quite a distinct whistle. I think it might be a little bit too far for you to hear. So I'll play the, um, the call for you just to show you what we're listening to and show you what the barred owlet looks like. Barred owlet... Looks similar for those who haven't seen it. Looks very similar to that of the uh, or to that uh, pearl spotted owlet. However, it is um, slightly different. Those that barring around the front, the head's a little rounder. Looks a bit different. Let me play the call for you. Can you hear that? It's also a very small bird. Not a large owl, but that's uh, not that call, the other one. <laughs> that sounds wonderful, doesn't it? 
different. But this sound is what we can hear at the moment. So that's the bar outlet that we can hear. But we are looking for a leopard. <laughs> Alright, now uh, Tristan has found something completely opposite to the elephant because it's very, very small. I have, by and I found our smallest land-based carnivore, our dwarf mongoose. And I actually haven't spent some time with dwarf mongoose in a while, so it's quite nice to see the little fellas. And actually, at one point, it was very cool. We had a squirrel on one side and a dwarf mongoose on the other side, and they were both on their back legs staring at each other into each other's eyes. And it was quite a cool comparison, but the squirrel lost its nerve and ran away. I think it was because more dwarf mongoose started to emerge from the mound. But there you go. You can see a couple of them running about as they do. They're always busy little things. Very seldom do they sit still. You see that with the grass being a little long, they actually sometimes sit on their back legs like that, and that's so that they can look out for any predators. Also, it seems as though that little one is grooming the other one's feet. It's almost like king of the dwarf mongoose. Kiss my feet. The rest of you, I am the one that is the most important. But it's also, I suppose, just a bit of grooming that's going on. But they do this, like I say, just to see what's going on around them, see if there's any predators, and make sure that they aren't being caught out by something sneaking up towards them in this long grass. When the grass is very long, they have to be a little bit more careful. It's been a while since the grass was long enough for them to kind of be too stressed about it. But there we go, running back towards the main mound where there's another one sitting there. And I wonder if they're actually feeding on termites. You can see that that mound is actually active. There's dark soil on top. And so I wonder if maybe there's a few termites that are on top that they're busy feeding on at the moment. And that's why they're in this area. It'll be interesting to see because generally these guys only use termite mounds that are inactive. But this particular termite mound looks as though there's been recent building given the darkness of the soil. And so maybe that's why they're there. What also it looks like is it looks like it's a, maybe a mother with two younger ones because those other two are quite small and they have much younger looking faces than what the one on the left has. So I wonder if it's a mother with her two little ones together. So Blue24, you're asking if they're related to meerkats. Well, not directly, but I, I suppose they're in the same kind of grouping very distantly, but they are not, a meerkat is not a mongoose. It is part of the same order of animals, but it is not a mongoose itself. Uh, sorry, I've just seen a whole bunch of guinea fowl that have just flown off the ground and landed in a marula tree next to me, which sometimes when guinea fowl fly up into trees, they're not squawking, but generally they don't go up into trees unless there's something around that spooks them, but they're quite quiet, so I don't think it's a leopard that's around here just yet. So interesting maybe the dwarf mongoose they got a little bit kind of saw them and decided to go up now earlier today i was on foot actually and i was walking around and as swapner you asked me about mongoose tracks during the day i saw it on my twitter feed that you asked about mongoose tracks and how do we tell the difference between all of these mongoose tracks so probably a really good idea just to delve into it now since we have the mongoose around so i've got my book over here and this has got the mongoose tracks on the right hand side so some of the more common mongoose in the form of the dwarf mongoose like we're looking at and then the slender mongoose over here and you were asking me about how we know what the different kind of mongoose tracks are and how we tell the differences well there's a few little things for each one that helps you determine tracks for each one so we'll start with the dwarf mongoose because it's the smallest track so size is obviously the first most important thing this is a dwarf mongoose actual size track so you can see right front and right hind the front has got this little kind of toe that comes past with a little claws and what you'll immediately notice with these is one is that they're very small two that the track is a very triangular pad as you can see by my drawing and my scribbling all over the place and the distance between the toes is very very far away on well, between the toes and the claws is very far away so you've got a nice long gap between the two if we go to something like a slender mongoose over here on top you'll notice look how close the claws are to the tip of the toe much much closer distance also size is much much bigger and it has these lobes that are very distinct that you don't really see on a dwarf mongoose track so that's a slender and a dwarf now you wouldn't really confuse dwarf mongoose with anything but a slender mongoose you could definitely confuse with a white tail and I'll show you now why oh, I mean sorry a banded mongoose so here is the banded mongoose on top you can see a very similar size to what that slender mongoose is but the banded mongoose the claws are much further away from the toes than what you see on a slender mongoose so that's how you would be able to tell how a banded mongoose 
looks differently, especially on the front foot. The back foot, they quite close, and so that would be a little bit harder. But you'll find that on the front foot, and much more circular track than what you see from the slender mongoose. The slender mongoose more oval, and the banded more circular. And then the white-tailed mongoose over here, right at the bottom, you can see is absolutely massive in comparison to the others. Also has that very box-shaped back pad, and then it's got cl claws very close to the toes, but big oval-shaped claws, and you really can't confuse it because of how much bigger it is than any of the others. So those are the four species of mongoose we get here commonly. There is also the Mellers mongoose that we do get, which is this guy over here, which also has claws very close to the pads, but quite nice even lobes on both sides of the pad. And so you'll see all the others have quite an angled pad that goes sort of slanting from the inside out, whereas these guys nice and even on the lobes. And that's how you can tell the difference between all of them. Very cool. So hopefully that answers your question, and hopefully you understand a little bit more about the tracks that is the little dwarf mongoose and, well, all of the others. Now we've arrived at Chippa, and I'm slowly going down towards the waterhole, and there is a nice surprise for you guys at some point that I'm hopefully going to show you all in a little bit. Now, Josh, you say these dwarf mongoose are your favorite animals. Go, little one. Off you go. The smallest one just ran across the road, so we're just letting them all cross. And I think that's everybody. So, Josh, I'm not surprised. They are very cool little creatures. I like dwarf mongoose. I find them very comical. They've got always busy, always moving, never really sitting still for long periods of time. And so I thoroughly enjoy the way that they go about their business and their characters. There's lots and lots of sort of little nuances about them. They're twitchy, they move, they you know, constantly kind of on the lookout for things. And they've got a very interesting social structure and the way that they kind of dominate and become dominant individuals is very interesting so I quite like them I think they're very very cool animals and they certainly pack a lot of punch for their size that's for sure particularly these little dwarf mongoose they're easily able to you know out maneuver and outweigh even some big snakes that you would think would have those guys for breakfast so it's pretty incredible to kind of see how it all works with those guys and how social structures and being in a bigger unit can allow you to go after larger animals now we're just coming to the dam there's some hippos as per normal which is always very good i'm going to try and maybe pull off this side because it gets us nice and low to the water and we're going to try and have a little look at the hippos there's the egyptian geese family lots really going on at the moment which is very very cool chitra dam is always a hive of activity so hopefully We'll be able to actually spend some time here while we wait for your surprise that we are hopefully going to show you. Now, there we go, Ferg. How's that? Are we good? So, there's our hippos that are all just sitting at their normal spot. They love the little dead tree, etc. And even a big yawn to welcome us. Half a yawn, we'll call it. So, that one was half yawning. It wasn't a full big yawn that it was giving and then you can see some of the other hippos that are just always resting in this area and the reason why is because it's a nice big shelf perfect for a hippo to have a little sit and to enjoy and you can see a few oxpeckers landing on the hippos is not having a very easy time that oxpecker everyone keeps going underwater as it lands on them and those oxpeckers are very clever because they use the hippos one as a place where they can possibly find food but more than anything else in water like this they use them as a raft where they can drink from so you can see look they can go and drink and they don't have to worry about predation at all because you're going to have a situation where there's going to be very few predators that are brazen enough to grab a oxpecker off the back of a hippo so it's a perfect place to go and get water the problem is is when you choose two young hippos that are busy sparring and play fighting it inevitably means you don't actually end up being able to drink very much at all you keep kind of bouncing off the back of the hippos there you go you see just like that so poor oxpeckers are not having much luck of it at this stage but these two typical when we come here we normally see this the two of them kind of bouncing around and giving each other a little bit of nonsense and they kind of push and shove and, and it's all just playful games that you see a lot of from hippos in in general and in young hippos particularly they like to play around like this nothing like a playful hippo look at that how cute is that <laughs> I think they're very, very cute. Super playful little guys. There's something about a baby hippo that I think renders everybody in, into little mush and sort of thinking of cute animals. There's, you know, oh, that one's being flipped on its back. Look, are its legs going to come up? No, nope. it managed to turn back over. The other one was kind of pushing it onto its back a little bit, and there was a leg at one point that kind of flipped over. There we go. It's still games are still being played. Naughty teenagers. 
And eventually what you'll find is the game gets rougher and rougher and rougher until somebody gets a little hurt and sometimes mom intervenes or they kind of swim apart from each other because someone gets a little bit bitten and it's not as comfortable as they thought it would be. So in typical teenage games, it's always boisterousness until actually someone gets hurt. Now somebody's calling me, so just give me two seconds. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can copy you. Copy, thanks. Right, so I'm going to be able to go and show you our surprise, but it's going to take me a while to get there. So I'm going to leave these hippos for now. And while I do that, I'm going to send you back across to Biceps Byron and see where he is and whether or not he's maybe had some luck with that male leopard. Well, um, I'm checking around, but no luck yet. No luck yet. I think that leopard may have just gone and lay in a thick drainage line somewhere and waited for those elephants to move off. We're going to hang around the area and maybe, maybe later he pokes his head out and we can find him. He's still checking very carefully everywhere. I think it's only, only right to be checking everywhere. Uh, Matt, um, you're asking if animals alarm call if the big cats are sleeping. Well, um, you know, Matt, I think if, uh, if, if impala or any of the antelopes see a predator, chances are they're probably going to alarm call whether it's sleeping or not. Um, yeah, I've, I've definitely, I've seen um, impala and that alarm call at sleeping male lions that are out in the open. Um, and then they, they kind of move off eventually. But um, but the other day we were in the um, in that Mawati in the drainage line, and we had uh, the um, six pride, the pride of lions, and there were monkeys in the trees right above them. And those lions were sleeping, and the monkeys did not make a sound. And even afterwards, those lions got up and moved. Monkeys did an alarm call at all. So I don't know. It's interesting. And this, the monkeys don't feel threatened. There's a beautiful cuckoo. Oh. A Jacobin, is it? It looks like a Jacobin. It is, it is indeed. It's got quite a cool hairstyle going on there. <laughs> a beautiful Jacobin cuckoo. Now, pretty soon these cuckoos are all going to migrate and head north. Uh, Tom, a good question. We were actually chatting about this the other day, or myself and some friends, and uh, um, regarding the cuckoos and uh, what makes them migrate. So I think it's a combination of things, Tom. I think it's the um, the shorter days. So the the mornings, obviously, it takes a while for the mornings to get uh, to get light, and then it gets darker earlier in the afternoon. So the shorter days. And the temperature starting to change, um, possibly less food because the insects might not be as active. But I think it's shorter days. I think that's the main reason. Um, so the, and the birds can realize, they start realizing, okay, it's now moving into winter. The days are becoming shorter and, um, and they'll potentially migrate. So it's that, uh, but then also a combination of the temperature, I think, too. Okay, so... From this beautiful migrating cuckoo. Let's go to Ali who's got a butterfly which I doubt migrates. Well, perhaps it migrates from one edge to the other. Now, we're looking at a beautiful butterfly that's actually feeding on probably the nectar of the raisin bush. I have no clue as to what species of butterfly it could be. And I think it's actually the first time that I've seen this one. I'm not great at IDing butterflies, so perhaps if you guys have any clues as to which one this one might be, it might be really cool to find out. Uh, we can call it spotted butterfly for the time being, or wannabe leopard. I think those are some of the names that we could use for this afternoon. I reckon they would be quite, quite useful. And it is very beautiful, isn't it? A leopard butterfly, yeah, I agree with you, Senzo. Definitely a leopard butterfly.
Now, funny enough, we actually stopped here not because of the butterfly, although I'm loving the fact that it's just carrying on with its day, allowing us to see it feeding without being all that bothered. Now, I'm sorry, butterfly, but I'm going to just move onto the side very quietly as if you were a leopard so that you don't fly away. Now, going back to the theme of poisonous plants, this is one of the biggest problems that we get in all of South Africa. This beautiful tiny little shrub that we get here. Now, very, very pretty flowers. They almost grow in a little cluster like this. And it's beautiful, isn't it? Why, why shouldn't it be here? Well, part of the reason why it shouldn't be here is because it's actually from Central and South America. Now, it's called Lantana, or I know it as Purple Lantana, and Herbie and I were laughing because we both came around and we were like, no, it's, I know it as Purple Lantana, and Herbie was like, no, 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 it's called Bird's Brandy. <laughs> so we ended up taking the book out, and then, clearly enough, this is thankfully why we have scientific names, because it's the same plant. <laughs> we just didn't know it had two different names. Now... This particular plant is, is much of a problem because, well, it's an invasive species, which means it's not a plant that is natural to the African continent, especially not South Africa, so it should not be here. And it shouldn't be here because part of the issue is that it's actually taking over certain areas and it can prevent the natural vegetation from actually growing here. Now, it's, it's able to, obviously, it's found very good conditions, so it carries living here. Some animals will eat it, but the problem is that it's even poisonous to animals in particular cattle so if the cows for example or sheep or other cattle species that might be eaten they can eventually die so it's become a problem and it's one of the main species on the list for South Africa species of invasive to try and eradicate and get it out of the system because again it's not it's not a plant that should be here now very beautiful indeed but not everything or not everything that's pretty should be around this one deadly both to humans and to animals. Now, I think what we're going to do is we're probably going to demarcate where this one is, and then we're going to have to let the team of the Savvy Sand know that we've actually got this particular plant over here so that they can come and take it out. Because there are very big projects being done all around the area just to take the plants that don't belong in here to take them out. Now, seems like Tristan's finally got that surprise for us, and oh, I'm hoping right as it's what it's going to be, but let's go and find out. Well, it's a very, very, very cool surprise. And the reason why is, firstly, it's one of my favorite leopards in this whole area, Tumba, that is sitting ever so elegantly scratching his back and having a really kind of chilled time of it. But he's not on his own this afternoon. I believe that Tingana is also here, and apparently there was also a third leopard. Now, no one can tell me where the third leopard went, but there's definitely Tumba and Tingana lying next to each other, and there is a carcass involved here as well. Now, apparently Tumba has actually arrived here with Tingana on the carcass already, so it's not like Tingana has stolen it from Tumba. It seems as though Sun is almost trying to steal from Dad at this stage, so it's very, very cool that we don't have just one. We have two to break our little leopard drought that we've been having, and to have father and son is always very, very special. It's a weird relationship that Tingana's got with his two boys in this area, so in terms of having you know, Hosanna and Tumba around. Tingana seems so tolerant of these two, far more tolerant than I ever, ever thought that he would be. It really is quite amazing to me to think that these guys are as tolerant, well, this guy is as tolerant as he is, particularly because Tumba and Hosanna have left their moms ages ago and are both becoming quite big leopards now. They're not exactly tiny, small individuals. They're starting to get nice and big now. And so I'm surprised that Tingana is as tolerant as he has been with them over the past little bit. Now, Tingana is lying on the other side of a very dense thicket. Tumba, you can see, has gone to sleep now. And so what I want to try and do is just try and get round and try and get a better view. And hopefully we can see both of them. So I'm just going to do a bit of repositioning because another vehicle just left, which was on the other side. And that's why I parked here for now. But because that vehicle has just left, let's try and go around and see if we can get a better view of both of them, which is very, very cool. So super excited that they're both here. Apparently they were out in the open. And so hopefully they will come out into the open. And apparently Tumba was just following Tingana around and Tingana was just ambling with Tumba, kind of walking behind him, as father and son would do, I suppose. It's pretty ridiculous when you think about it, because very few leopards 
like I say, are this tolerant of their sons when they've left their moms. So it's very, very cool to see. And hopefully we'll have an epic afternoon with these guys together. But let me just try and get myself into a better position and try and see if we can maybe see both of them. It's not a really nice place that Tingana's lying. So apparently he's lying in a bit of a thicket down below, which is okay. We'll try and figure it out. And I'm sure with a bit of time, we'll be able to work it out and be able to get ourselves into really nice positions that we can see both of our beautiful cats and hopefully they'll come together again at some point but let's see now I believe Tingana is just down in the drainage on the right hand side here so we're gonna try and go forward a little bit so Rhonda you're wondering about whether or not the other third leopard could have been Hosanna I suppose it's possible. Hosanna hasn't been seen the last couple of days. He's been kind of moving around. Oh, there I can see him now. Um, Ferg, I think if we go forward, we're going to have a better view of him. Let me just keep going. I don't want to disturb Tumba, but I can see Tingana back of his head. And it's really obscured for Fergus. Just careful your heads here. Nice and sharp thorns. Tumba, are you going to stay still for me, boy? It's going to make my life a little bit more difficult. But can you see there, Ferg? There we go. So there's Tingana with his kill. And it looks like I'm afraid, Ali, to tell you that this is one of the baby waterbuck that has been killed. So I don't know if it is 100% a baby waterbuck, but it very much looks like one of the baby waterbuck has been taken by Tingana. And that does not surprise me at all, because Tingana has always been a very good hunter of waterbuck. He's often been found in this area with waterbuck. Is it a waterbuck? Can you see there, Fergus? Is there... It looks waterbucky. Hang on a second. That fur, is it just me or does that fur look spotty? Is it a hyena that he's got? It looks like a hyena that he's got there. That's spotted fur. I hope it's not a leopard that he's busy eating. That's very weird. I can't see what it is to be honest, but that fur looks spotty to me. It's not a leopard spot pattern, which is at least some sort of good thing but I don't know maybe it's just the fact that the fur is all wet but it definitely looks spotted to me what do you think Ferg? hyena? looks like a hyena I don't know if cursed what do you think you got a bigger screen than what we do it looks very hyena-ish in my point of view and opinion it so it does have mottled colored fur hmm I don't know what else it could be I'll try and reposition just now and get a really kind of a better view of what's going on. Unfortunately, where Tumba's lying is making it difficult, but just the way it's... its de Exactly, it's definitely not a baby waterbuck. I just hope that that is not a leopard that is lying there that is being eaten by Tingana. It doesn't look leopard-like to me. It looks hyena-ish. I wonder if he didn't find a hyena, a youngish hyena... Oof, I don't know. Difficult to say what it is. We'll definitely try and get a bit more of a view and try and kind of position ourselves where we can get a little bit more of an angle. Hopefully, Tingana will pick it up at some point and move it and put it up into a tree or something like that. And we can actually get a really good look as to what he's got. But he must have killed this. Like I say, Ting Tumba was seen far from this area um, this morning. He was seen up on Torchwood. So he's walked a long way during the day today to get to this area. And so... You know, the fact that Tingana is not really even growling at Tumba would mean that I doubt that that is a leopard. Unless, you know, of course, he could have gotten hold of one of our other leopards around. Maybe, you know, Sabui's cubs or Sabui was seen, I think, on Arethusa today of all places, which is quite weird. So I don't know. I mean, a very difficult thing to work out. But it looks hyena-ish to me, which is very strange for Tingana to go after a hyena is seriously crazy. I thought he had... Like I say, a little waterbuck or something like that. The guys weren't sure. They just said he's got a kill. But I didn't expect us to find a spotted kill inside there, which is really, really weird. Now, Tumba is actually lying just in front here. There he is over there. So I'm actually in the way of Tumba. But that's where Tumba is sitting. And you can see Tumba is completely rest relaxed. There is no sign of anything inside his belly. So that means that he hasn't actually fed on this carcass. It means Tingana is the one that killed this and has been feeding off it. Now, as much as we want Tingana to eat, we do not want him to eat other predators, <laughs> especially not if it is anything that is like a leopard. Now, Tingana, I see, is up and kind of standing, so let's see what he does. 
Alan Girl, not particularly, I don't think. I don't think a hyena is really high up on their food items, but when you're an old male that's a little skinny and food's hard to come by, I suppose anything is possible. We know Mvula went after aardvark and porcupines and, you know, I've seen Saleh going after cane rats and so you never know with a leopard. There's so much on their, di- on their sort of diet that you can't really tell exactly what they like or what they don't like. But I have a feeling that this is more either an opportunity situation or it's a situation where there was an injured animal that Tingana kind of grabbed and, and now he's just feeding off that fact or he's trying to defend himself and he managed to kill it and now he's feeding off it. But this must have been a serious racket that must have been made. If it's a hyena, that hyena would have made a lot of noise. It wouldn't have been a quiet situation at all. Very strange though. But you see Tingana, I think he's looking around trying to see where Tumba is. I think that's what he's busy doing at the moment because he's shot up and he's kind of looking around. Maybe it's because there it was a report of a third leopard around. Maybe that other leopard is coming from there. But there goes Tingana. You can see looking as big and burly as he's looked in a long time. It's almost like he's starting to get back a bit of his shape, isn't it? That stomach is absolutely massively bloated at the moment. So... What, he's had a really good feed on whatever this carcass is, and he's seriously gone to town and made himself nice and full, which is good for for Tingana. It means that he is at least getting nutrients, whether it be Aina or anything else, is not really the point. As long as he's actually getting some food, it makes most sense. Right, now I'm going to sit here for a while, and I'm going to see what exactly is going on. While I do that, let's send you back across to Ali, who's looking at all the smaller things. We are looking at the small things, however, we were looking at the tracks for those leopards that Byron, or the leopard that Byron and Tristan were looking at earlier, but we haven't had any luck. It seems like there is this herd of elephants has made a very good effort of just, you know, squashing the road everywhere. So, is this a little something? No, that's a little nothing. That's just a piece of grass. So, I was hoping that maybe we would have been able to bump into some more tracks. And it seems like Herbie over there has actually gone ahead of us and he's managed to find some more tracks for this leopard. And it seems like it goes in that general direction. So well done, Herbie, for finding them while we've been talking to you guys over here. Now, he's rafted around here. And definitely you can see the toes here, two, 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 and the back pad going in that direction. We're going to carry on following, see if perhaps we can come across this leopard and find out who it is. But while we do that, let's head back to Byron. Uh, Well, some cloud cover above us. And more elephant. (laughs) Seems like an elephant everywhere today. I'm not complaining at all. Watch this little one. (laughs) I mean... Quite quickly, they, they kind of go into a little run when they go downhill. A lot of elephant around. Still no sign of uh, a leopard on our side. Tristan was sneaky. He went all the way to Chitra for leopard. But I'm so glad that he, he's found both Tamba and Tingana on a, on a kill. That's wonderful. It's not often you get two male leopards close to each other with a kill. It's interesting that uh, Tingana actually still tolerates that young male. Obviously doesn't see him as a threat. Not yet anyway. Still young. And we'll just sit with his elephant and possibly find a leopard of our own a little bit later. Hopefully. <laughs> Bonnie, so Byron the elephant whisperer. I don't think so. I think there's just so many so many elephant around, Bonnie, that um that's not very difficult to find them. As Ali was saying, the elephant have um, walked over just about every road and track around, so it makes it difficult to find other animals. But it is great to spend time with these elephant. Really 
<laughs> it's a very strange, very strange sound. I, I think it's an elephant trying to trumpet. I just want to have a look. First lady, do male elephants ever play a role in raising the um, the young? No, they actually don't. It's the herd and the females. Sorry, this fe this female doesn't want us to pass. Clearly, now I wonder where that trumpeting was come from. Coming from, it sounded like an elephant trying to trumpet with a blocked trunk. That's what it sounded like. It was such a strange sound. <laughs> it sounded almost like the drone. Kirsty used that. It sounded like the drone. It did. Such a strange sound. <laughs> but no, it was an, an elephant <laughs> trying to trumpet. Watch that little one's. Wow, that little one's having a little tantrum there. Look at that. Breaking branches, showing how strong it is. upset. Maybe it was him trumpeting and we laughing in his trumpet. Sure. He's very, very upset about something. Maybe. Oh, sure. Throwing branches and wonder, wonder if he was, uh, he was disciplined for some reason and now very upset. With that <laughs> funny behavior from young elephants. Oh, that one, look, oh, that one's gonna lie down. No? Just decided to go. Is it going to lie down or not? There's amazing elephant behavior at the moment. This afternoon has been really great. A lot of you asking about the, this um, leopard that we were looking for. I'm not sure which leopard it would have uh, it would be, but it, it does look like a male leopard. Um, the, the tracks that we saw did look male, um, so also not Tandy. I know a lot of you wondering where Tandy has been uh, with her cub, that female leopard and her cub. Um, and I don't know. We haven't seen them for a while. I wonder if they're not hiding somewhere on Torchwood, perhaps. I don't know if anything happened to them yet. I don't think so. I just think they're possibly hiding somewhere on Torchwood. Maybe uh, Tani had a kill and she's been feeding happily. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I, I've, I've got a feeling that's what's happened. And she's also probably staying away from this area for the moment because... There has been this male, this Hukamuri male, wandering in and out, and she's going to be very protective over her cub, so she doesn't want to walk around with uh, with that cub in an area where she knows there's a male leopard trying to take over territory. All right, I think I'm going to try squeeze through here quickly. Continue our search for this male leopard on the other side. Hopefully these elephants let us go through with no issue. A lot of elephant here. Mia, I agree. I do agree with you. You say elephants are so soothing to watch. There's that baby. There's that baby. Hold on. Sorry, Viam. Is it that little one, Viam? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. And it's the little one making the noise. Maybe got something stuck in its trunk. Look at that. <laughs> look at that little trunk. It probably wants to suckle and the mom's not stopping. That is wonderful. So the same herd we saw earlier, they just moved down into this drainage line. And that little strange broken trumpet sound we heard, and that drone sound, was actually this little baby trying to trumpet to make a noise. Oh, that is magnificent. 
<laughs> it was such a funny sound. There's another elephant shaking its head at us a little bit, just in front of us, a young elephant. Um, I hope that little youngster trumpets again for us. Love to hear it. You can hear how these elephant are feeding, breaking gr grass, feeding on all this rich green vegetation at the moment. Some communicating there. All right, well, I'm going to sit here with these elephant for a while. Oh, wait, hold on. Sorry, this little one is just. Showing off a little bit here. Oop. Don't get upset with this. And this is the one that is breaking branches in that. <laughs> I'm going to sit here for a while with this elephant. Let's quickly go to Tristan. I think Tamba is starting to get up and move. Tamba is up and moving and coming towards that big chunk of meat that is being closely guarded by a very large male leopard. So it is a warm, warm welcome to Legacy Elementary that is joining us this afternoon for our school drive. I hope that you're having the best day at school and that you are going to love every little bit of joining us for this afternoon. My name is Tristan. On camera today I've got Fergus and this is interactive which means that you guys are watching us live. We are doing this right now which means that you can also ask questions and so you just give your questions to your teacher and your teacher will send the questions through to us and we'll try and answer as many of your questions as possible. But this is the best way to start a drive with you guys because the leopard is the shyest and most reclusive of all the animals and so finding a big male on a water buck kill like this is absolutely amazing. Now, just now we weren't sure if this kill was a water buck or if it was a hyena because it had a little spotted pattern on it. But it is indeed a baby water buck. That is what it is. You can see the head just behind the male's shoulders there in its ear. So that is a young kind of antelope that we get in this area, very similar to a deer about a little bit bigger than a deer and that's a little baby that was probably born in the last little bit and this male leopard who's one of our older male leopards he's about 12 years old he's very good at hunting baby waterbuck and so he managed to bring down this baby waterbuck but it's not just him on his own just now you would have heard me mentioning the word tumba now tumba is a young male leopard that is this male's son so tumba is in the bush behind the male leopard and what he's doing is he's coming in to maybe try and see if he can steal some of this kill from his dad but that's not going to happen because dad is very strong and very big and he's not going to want to let his son come anywhere near his kill he's going to chase his son away and he's going to keep that food for himself and keep his son at bay the problem is is both of these leopards need a good meal Dad is getting very old and he's been a little bit sick lately and so he needs a lot of food to try and get himself better. And son, well son is a young male that's been left by his mother recently and is trying to work out how to become a big strong leopard and that means that he's having a lot of time trying to hunt but he's still learning how to hunt and so it's not very good. And so both of them are a little bit skinny and this meal is something that they both need and we need both of them to actually feed off it. So it'll be interesting to see if dad does let him feed at some stage. I don't think so though. Jen Generally, a big male leopard won't let anyone near their carcass or their kill, and they won't let anybody else feed on their meal at all. Now, what you'll find, though, is that this male has dragged this meat into this area because it's nice and thick and dense. It's the perfect place to hide a kill away from hyenas and vultures and other or lions. And then, if any of those do come, he's able to then grab it and take it up into all the trees that are close by. There's a really nice big tree to our right, so that tree there, he can take the carcass and pull it up into the tree and get it out of the way of hyenas and various other things. So it's a really good place for him to be. Now what I want to try 
and do is I'm just going to try and move a little bit because I want to try and see if we can get a view of both of the leopards for you and try and see if we can get a view of his face and not just the back of his head. And so what I'm going to do is try and go back a little bit and go around onto this other side. But this is all very, very exciting. And like I say, you're being spoiled. To see one leopard is very special. To see two leopards is incredibly special. So we're going to try and just get back a little bit. We've just got to be careful of our heads because there's a very sharp thorny tree right on my right hand side so I don't want to cut myself with that thorny tree. Am I okay there Ferg? So I'm going to just go back a little bit and then what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and get in on this side where hopefully I can show you both of these leopards together. Now remember you must ask lots and lots of questions. I haven't heard any questions coming through so remember to keep your questions coming and keep sending them to your teacher and then she'll send them all towards where I am and hopefully we'll then be able to talk to you guys. Now Fergus I'm going to try and squeeze in here. I think we can squeeze in here and maybe we can get a really nice view. Let's see. How am I doing there Ferg? Can you see that male? Okay good. So Fergus can see that male over there. I can't see where the young male is. He's behind somewhere in that thicket and is kind of just sitting waiting for dad to move. So Josiah and Macy, a leopard can normally run at about 35 miles an hour. So it's not the fastest of the big cats. We get other big cats that are much faster. So things like cheetah and, and lions, they run faster than a leopard. But what a leopard is very good at is being a ambush predator. Now when I say ambush, what that means is it's a predator that likes to sit in the long grass or in places where it's very thick and lots of trees and bushes and it has a very specialized coat so it has hair that is colored in the right way to make it look invisible to the prey animals and so leopards get into places like this and then they wait for the prey so in this case a little water buck to come very close and then they have a quick run out and they grab it and then they able to pull it down and so a leopard is not designed to run very fast because it doesn't normally have to run very far it doesn't have to cover distance to get to its prey it normally hunts from very close and so it's built to be very powerful and very strong so that it can bring down the prey quickly and then take it up into the trees out of the way of other predators so they're a little bit different to cheetahs not very fast at all so they run at about 30 35 miles an hour when at full speed but very seldom do leopards actually get that fast because generally they have a situation where they don't need to because they're running very short distance and so it's an explosive little run forward to grab the calf right i'm going to sit here and enjoy these leopards a little bit longer because we're going to have to give some of the other guys that are out in this area a chance to come see them but while i sit with these guys let's send you over to my good friend ali who's not in a vehicle she's out on foot and she's with a really big animal Well, we are with a very big creature now. I've got to whisper as we are very close to it and we are on foot. So we don't want it to know that we are actually here. So we're looking at a beautiful elephant that's just feeding about maybe, I'm not sure, 10 meters away from us, roughly. And it's just carried on with its day. Now, it is wonderful to be able to spend time with some of these animals on foot. It is very, very special and it makes you feel very small. Very, very small. Now, very warm welcome to the elementary school that you guys are joining us today. We're very happy to have you guys here on our walk, on our bushwalk. Now, it's fantastic to see the elephants all the way there. And I think, I'm not too sure if there's just one, as it sounds like maybe further into the bushes there could be some others. And we know there have been a lot of herds coming around and just coming into down this area. Now they probably come to the dry riverbed as you see because although the riverbed is dry there's a lot of water underneath the ground and that keeps everything around very very nice and yummy. So I'm sure this elephant is here because it's enjoying everything that it's eating. Everything tastes probably a lot better. Cameron uh, elephants eat uh, many things. This particular one is now feeding on the grass, but they can also eat leaves and they can eat fruit. So they eat pretty much anything that they can find in their natural environment. They eat a lot of it. Such big creatures, well, they need to eat many, many kilograms, sometimes maybe 100, 200, 300 kilograms of food, depending on how big they are. Now I'm sure you can see it's putting all its food right in its mouth. And every now and again you can hear it pulling a chunk of grass from the ground. 
We're going to see if maybe we can get another glimpse of these elephants from somewhere else. But while we do that, let's head over to Byron, who's got a bird. Oh, look at this beautiful bird of prey that we've just found. Now, I'm trying to see. This is a difficult, to identif a difficult one to identify because uh, I think this is a young bird of prey. Now... I wonder if it is not a young African hawk eagle. I've got a feeling that's what it is. It's a young African hawk eagle. Almost reaching adult plumage. And um, you know, I think that's maybe what it is. We'll try have a good, a good look. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's a little, a young African hawk eagle. And there's some other birds and squirrels all alarm calling at the moment, because they're making a lot of no because they're worried of this bird of prey. So they're making a lot of noise, warning each other that there's danger because this bird could potentially catch some of them. Wonderful hello to Legacy Elementary. We haven't said hello to you yet. It's always nice to have the schools with us on drive. And um, my name is Byron, and with me on camera is VM. Now, Cody, you were wondering why are animals and people so different? Well, have a look at this animal, which is a great example of how different we are first. He's hiding now. I hope he comes out. I'm just going to turn the car quickly. And this is a wonderful animal that I know a lot of people enjoy seeing. And let's see if he comes out. Have a look. We can see his head poking out at the moment. Now, can you spot him yet? I wonder if you can see him. We'll move in slowly. I'll give you a clue. Look at the tops of the trees. Oh, there he is. A wonderful giraffe. Isn't that nice? Well, Cody, I don't know. Animals and people, why are they so different? It's just the way that we have been made. I, I don't know if there's a reason, um, but obviously... <laughs> it's a difficult question to answer, Cody. <laughs> it's just the way we've been made. Um, the animals have been have um, basically all got different roles to play in nature. So, like the giraffe, for example, he eats all the leaves right at the top of the trees. Um, and the elephant, and I'll try to show you some elephant. A little bit later, they feed on a lot of other vegetation, like grass, as well as branches of trees and leaves. They feed on just about everything. But every animal has got a different role to play in nature. And we have a different role to play. We also out here to protect and look after these animals. And luckily for us, we get to view them and enjoy seeing them in the wild. And you see those little ox peckers on the neck of the giraffe? They're actually picking off little ticks. Little insects that will be annoying the giraffe. And those ox peckers help the giraffe to get them off. Because the ox pecker eats the ticks. But look how well camouflaged the giraffe is. Disappears very, very easily. Uh, well, that was nice, a nice surprise. So, big eagle and a giraffe. Let's go across to Tristan, who's got those beautiful leopards to show you. I do indeed, but our beautiful leopards are having a really good sleep. And that's because that beautiful leopard has a massive round tummy. And it's because he's eaten a lot of that water buck. So even though he was skinny before this, he's now got a huge tummy. 
And so hopefully that's going to help him start to get nice and big and strong again. Like I say, he was feeling a little bit sick for the last few weeks. And so it's good that he's found himself some food. Maybe this is now going to help him get back into it and start to really become a lot more stronger. And we need him to be stronger because at the moment the leopards are kind of in a bit of a different situation we're in a place where a lot of our leopards have changed where they like to to move around and that's because we have a new male leopard around and he's come in because this male has been a bit sick and under the weather and means that the other male has come in to try and find some females and to try and find some mommies and the mommies because they've got little babies they don't want to be around that male because he that dad he might hurt those babies and so he, they've taken them away and so at the moment we don't have very many leopards around and we need this male to get up and to come and start to try and chase that other dad leopard away and keep him out of the area 